Rules for Bathing by E. P. Miller, M. D. From the Scientific American, July 3rd, 1869. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Rules for Bathing 1. Baths should not be taken within at least one hour before eating, nor within two hours after, and not within two hours before, and three hours after is still better. The reason for this is that in bathing, the blood is brought to the surface in large quantities and circulates freely in the capillaries of the skin, being drawn away from internal organs and generally diffused through the whole body, and the more freely this external circulation and warmth is kept up, the more refreshing and invigorating the bath becomes, and the greater the benefit derived from it. Whereas, when the stomach has recently been supplied with food, the blood is diverted from the external circulation to the digestive organs to supply the secretions and juices necessary to carry on the digestive process. From these facts, it will be evident that if food be taken into the stomach too soon after a bath, the blood is directed to the stomach before a full reaction has taken place, thus interfering with its beneficial effects. While on the other hand, if the bath be taken too soon after a meal, the blood is diverted from the digestive organs before digestion is completed, and thus a very important function of the body is interfered with. In cases of active congestion or inflammation, in fevers or in severe pain and distress, it may be necessary to make water applications irrespective of this rule. 2. The head and face should be thoroughly bathed at the commencement of every bath. This will prevent the rushing of blood to the head and ward off unpleasant sensations. 3. A bath should never be taken when the body is exhausted or too greatly fatigued by exercise, as a person in such a condition would not be likely to secure the proper reaction and warmth. Moderate exercise before a bath is usually beneficial, as it accelerates the circulation and secures a comfortable degree of warmth, which is always desirable before taking a bath. There is no danger from taking a general bath while in a perspiration, providing no fatigue accompanies it. For the sits and foot baths, however, it is better that the body be warm, but not perspiring. 4. All general baths should be taken briskly, and the bather himself, if able, should rub vigorously that he may quicken his circulation and respiration, and thus secure the warmth and glowing reaction that is so essential after every bath. This should be observed not only while in the bath, but in rubbing dry after it. 5. For drying the body after a general bath, a strong linen or cotton sheet is much better than towels. This should be for an adult at least two yards square so as to envelop the whole body like a cloak, and with it he should be rubbed or rub himself till thoroughly dry. By using the sheet for wiping, the body is protected from the air, the escape of heat is prevented, and there is much less liability to feel chilly afterwards. Towels will suffice, however, for all local applications. 6. At the completion of the bath, the bather should immediately dress, and if able, exercise in the open air or engage in some active employment. If not able to exercise, it is well to cover up warm in bed for an hour or so and sleep if possible. 7. Very nervous persons, or those whose digestion is much impaired, or circulation is imperfect and feeble, or temperature is below the normal standard, should be careful not to use cold water to any great extent in bathing. It may have a temporary beneficial effect, but in the end their sufferings will be likely to be increased. 8. Feeble invalids, consumptives, persons subject to hemorrhage of the lungs or the stomach, those who have just passed the crisis in fevers or other acute diseases, those suffering from profuse discharges, such as separations, diarrhea, cholera, etc., and also females during the menstrual period, should avoid the use of cold water as well as the excessive use of it in any form. 9. 
always use a thermometer to determine the temperature of baths for invalids. 10. An invalid should not bathe in a room with a temperature below 70 degrees, and for most persons, 80 degrees or 85 degrees would be better, provided there is good ventilation. End of Rules for Bathing by E. P. Miller, M. D. Read by Leanne Howlett.